Hey guys, this is Ken from Man Cave Effects. Today's video will be a little bit shorter as I am working on another video that costs a bit more time to put together. Uh, but please keep on watching as this tutorial is not at all as interesting and it will help you so many times when working with your K40 laser. By the way, the video I'm working on is not about the K40 laser but about the old Nintendo Entertainment Systems like the NES, Super NES and Game Boy that apparently I found at my attic yesterday. Uh, therefore I am now about to clean them up and uh, 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 try to bleach the casing as they were pretty much yellowed over the year. So if that video is for you, stay tuned, it will be online in the next days. Okay, so today's tutorial is all about box making. Um, let's say you're engraving something or you're crafting a little uh, gadget or a little uh, gift for somebody and you want to box it inside of a little wooden box or you need a little wooden box for whatever, put little screws in it or, or so. Um, you know, something like this. Um, that's a thing I made for a friend of mine. Um, he works in the film and he needed uh, a little box with some uh, filter tags they put uh, on the front uh, of the lens so the um, DOP or director of photo photography knows what kind of filter is uh, inside of the matte box. Um, you can see here I m also made a little cutout out of paper to make it look like a thing you could buy at a store or something. So they look pretty professional, right, with all the little teeth here and, and there and whatever. Um, they're actually pretty sturdy um, and they're pretty complicated to make. No, I'm just kidding. Um, boxes are actually one of the simplest things you can cut on your uh, K40 laser. Uh, as there are uh, web pages that make all the work for you. You just have to put in sizes and the thickness of your material and the software does the rest. I have opened some up here. Um, I, I don't want to mention any particular ones because they're all good in their own way, but there are hundreds of uh, nice web pages. Um, they certainly all like uh, a little donation here and then when you're using their uh, um, their software or their algorithms. What I mostly do, I build boxes that have teeth that grab in each other because this is the simplest thing you can put together. You just need a couple drops of glue and it will stick together. I'm sure you can also create boxes like this. Um, they even there are web pages where you can uh, create a heart shape box or uh, a round box or whatever. I mean, that's all up to you. Okay, so let's say we want to make a little gift box. Uh, let's say for Valentine's Day, for example, which is a little late, but maybe better too late than never or something. Uh, yeah. Well. Uh, okay. So let's start over. Um, I go with millimeters because for me this is just more logic and easier to work with. Uh, I always choose landscape. I don't know why there is portrait. I never tried this actually. I don't see much sense in this choice because your box will be three-dimensional anyways later on. So I will stay in landscape. A print info box means it will give you some more information on the PDF file, what we don't want because we have to vectorize this uh, later on and uh, everything more will be just, uh, well, it will not help much, so I, I keep this on the side. Okay, let's say we want to... Let's say we have a nice USB stick full of uh, legally bought music for our best friend or for our girlfriend, and we want to package this into a little box, so let's say we make the box a little bit bigger than the USB stick, uh, the width can be let's say five centimeters, we are in millimeters, so 50 millimeters uh, by, uh, let's say one centimeter, 10 millimeters high and 35 millimeters depth. Um, the thickness of our material, uh, I will work with wood, so my wood is four millimeters thick, so I say four tab width. That's the size of our teeth actually we want to make like um, those teeth you can see here. I think those were like 10 millimeters as the box we want to uh, cut out today is much smaller. 
I would say let's make teeth every eight millimeters. Um, this uh, logarithm will automatically calculate how many teeth it can put on each side to make it uh, aesthetically look nice. Um, I'm not sponsored, but I'm sure the makers of this site will be very happy if you place a little donation for them. All right, um, I won't touch too much here. Um, if when you click here on, on this question mark, you have everything explained again, what what is what and whatever. But um, mostly of the time, if we just need a quick, simple box, um, you don't have to uh, play too much uh, with all those settings. So in the end, our box is already finished. So we just go on download PDF, make a box 50 wide, 10 high, 35 depth. Okay, let's save this. All right, so what we have to do is, as um, this particular PDF format is not supported um, by Corel Draw, we have to import it first in a uh, photo editing program like Photoshop, or you can even make it convert online uh, to a, a JPEG format. Don't forget, don't export it as a PNG because that will mess up our Corel Trace program later on. So now um, our drawing is open and as you can see you see nothing but that's because our lines are very very thin and there you can see them barely. So I will fit this to the screen and uh, save this as a JPEG file. I keep the same name and I keep it in the same uh, folder. All right, so now we go to Coral Draw, import. We look for our file, which is here right now, and we import it, and there it is. So, first thing we have to do. Um, this graphic now, as I said, is not vectorized. So, as in my other video, as I explained, you can now select this, you can change colors and whatever, and it doesn't work because it's still a JPEG file, okay? So let's click on it, right mouse button, edit bitmap first, because I have to bring down the contrast even further, and I have to um, bring this to a black and white first. Um, so I go to image, adjust, brightness, contrast. I don't want to change too much in the intensity because you see this will just blacken out our whole picture. Oh, let's keep this on zero. Okay, so I will just... Uh, I will put this... Well, I'll keep this on 100. And I pull this down a little. So you see now it's nice and black. If the background gets a little bit gray, that's fine. The laser don't care about this. I will just click save. And I will exit the editor. And you see it's updated already. So now we're pretty much ready to vectorize this. So we go to Coral Trace and we, we will vectorize it. Okay, for this this time, we will go to Centerline Trace because we already have the outlines. There is no filling or anything inside or whatever. Uh, they are pretty thin, so we can go with the Centerline Trace. Uh, first of all, what we have to do, we just have to change the mode um, to black and white. If not, this will not work. Uh, it says threshold. Let's bring this up to 255 preview. And you see, we actually already have our outlines here. And uh, yeah, and then we just push trace. Um, we don't even have to change anything here. And there you have it. There you have your nice trace result. And we go to save this trace result. Um, let's call this just simply a box small gift. All right. Um, I changed this. No, I keep this. Save. So we close this and we have to open this now. Our small gift box. And there it is. That's actually all there is to it. So when I now ungroup this, you can even spread every part out. You can move it around and you can align it where you need it to be. So you save space on your uh, working area, on your printer or cutter. You can 
put this here. I could now also like uh, rotate this in 90 degrees like this. And uh, you see, you know, it takes less space in your printer bed like this. There you go. So, all right, when you cut this out, you can pretty much stick this together uh, like Lego. And uh, here and there, a little drop of glue, and you will have your perfect box. One last idea, if you want to build a box like this one, and you want to add some hinges here and a little lock or something, uh, I kept the teeth in on this side, but I took them out on the other side. Um, as in my last tutorial, as you know, or you should know right now, um, you can simply edit those lines again, and you can just simply delete those points, and you will get a straight line, right? Oops, like this. Oh, we can also select them like that, and select them like that, and there you go. So now you have a nice box with a flat end on one side. Sure, you can make a little engravement or a little drawing onto your box and engrave this first, and then uh, selecting all the other parts, make them translucent. First make your engraving, then make everything visible again, remove your engraving and cut it out. Okay guys, this is pretty much it. Uh, my next video will be out in a couple of days. I hope you enjoyed. Please engrave a little comment below and subscribe to my channel Man Cave Effects. See ya! Okay.